Read the lads and lasses, how we doing and welcome back to the channel. Hope you all have an, a fantastic day today and of course welcome back to the final home match preview of the season. Is that what we're going to call it? The final home game of the season for Newcastle United and already, honestly I can't believe it's the final uh, game at St James's Park for Newcastle United in all competitions. It kind of feels like it's been the longest season ever due to the injuries getting robbed in Paris. Champions League football, uh, cup draws, it kind of feels like it's been stretched out and we've had to go through so much this season but at the same time you take everything into context the season's done at home already honestly look but nevertheless it's a very vital one although it can be a very sentimental one fingers crossed we can get a fantastic season wrapped up at St James's Park and hopefully European football is around the corner if Manchester City win the FA Cup against Manchester United and Newcastle United beat Brighton at St James's Park this Saturday of course tomorrow at the time this uh, video is uploaded Tottenham Hotspur who are of course ahead of us in the Premier League table will play Burnley at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium if Burnley somehow managed to beat Spurs we will just be one point away from Champions League football with two games to play who are Manchester United and Brentford on the final game of the season Spurs have to play Manchester City and on the final day of the season for the most Spurs opportunity to ever bottle a game is already relegated Sheffield United away some people may say that's an easy game for them but I look at it like Spurs are actually going to bottle that game uh, but look nevertheless what happens I will be happy if Newcastle United get Champions League Europa League or of course Europa Conference League League football, anything to see our team play in Europe. To go them away days as a fan is something you could, you know, have lifelong memories and something you will have lifelong memories of. But look, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just a vital one for Europe, it's vital in the Premier League as well. So without further ado, let's take a look at some injury news given to us by Eddie Howe in his press conference this morning. Then we'll take a look at Brighton. Uh, of course, a little bit of news here and there about Brighton Football Club and Newcastle United and how I would line up in this game if I was Eddie Howe. Of course, you get down, uh, down below and let me know if you disagree with my life up which is later on in the video like if you do enjoy subscribe if you are new to the Jordy Josh channel and without further ado let's get into it Honestly, this actually feels kind of sad that it's the final match preview of the season that's going to be at St. James's Park. We're going to have to do without them for quite a long while. But look, let's take a look at the injury news Eddie Howe gave us in his press conference this morning. And apart from the Fabian Shaw news that we are about to speak about, it's actually very, very positive. Starting off with Kieran Trippier, who's kind of mysteriously been out for quite a while now. Eddie Howe says that Kieran Trippier has trained well and a decision will be made today if he can play against Brighton and Hove Albion. I'm going to say in the lineup to why I would not start Kieran Trippier. Yeah, you will heard it there ladies and gentlemen and find out later why and of course the three players who were named in the squad are at Turf Moor in our fantastic 4-1 victory Miggy Elmron, Joe Linton and of course Nick Pope who all didn't start and Eddie Howe says they are feeling fine he's not given uh, any indication to whether they will start but he said all three players there are feeling fine and Fabian Shaw will miss the Brighton game due to a hamstring injury Eddie Howe said at the actual time when uh, Fabian Shaw got injured that he'd be out for the season but Eddie Howe now says he could be back for Man United and it's not as bad as first fiat but without further ado let's take a look at the teams now starting with of course always the opposition Brighton and Hove Albion now of course we have played Brighton and Hove Albion once in the Premier League this season and it's not a game I want to remember right at the start of the Premier League season where we were still finding our feet we went through some horrible form with Liverpool Man City Brighton everyone was completely worrying has Eddie Howe been found out but look the tables have turned now of course we got battered 3-1 in that game and honestly we didn't have a look in Brighton absolutely controlled that game but now it's looking very very different Brighton and Hove Albion are 11th in the Premier League table just two wins in their last 10 games score wait for it in 10 whole games just five goals and a fair few Brighton fans were questioning can Roberto De Zerbi turn it around at Brighton and Hove Albion but to be fair to them of course as always we credit the teams and certainly pick out the flaws like we are going to do now they have struggled with European football this season all that fixture congestion just like Newcastle United this season when it hits you for the first time out of absolutely nowhere it can be very detrimental to the season but another thing that Brighton Football Club have in common with Newcastle United is the amount of injuries that we've suffered this season on Honestly, they've got a fair few. Kara Matoma, who of course has always been a key player for Brighton. He had an absolutely fantastic season last season. He is out for the whole uh, of the remaining Premier League season. So of course, he does miss uh, tomorrow's game against Brighton and Hove Albion. But also, we will see the likes of Tariq Lamptey. 
Van Heck, Purvis Estepinian, Evan Ferguson, Solly March, and Jack Hinchelwood, who, by the way, if you don't know him, I don't really blame you. He is just a young lad, but he's been doing very well for him, a very versatile player as well. All of them players just mentioned there could potentially be out for their game against Newcastle United tomorrow, so we've got to give them some credit, ladies and gentlemen. So, why don't we give them some credit? Brighton and Hove Albion are a very experimental team, which is so hard for Eddie Howe and Court to kind of guess what we're playing against, and of course, match player to player. They even switch the goalkeepers around Jason Steele, who is a former Macken by the way. Boo. Dutch goalkeeper for Bruggen and of course João Pedro who can play all across the front three and behind the striker. They've got a very very versatile team which like is also a characteristic of Newcastle United's team. What's going on with this Brighton and Newcastle similarity here? But they are a very versatile team and like I said with being so experimental it's going to be hard for Eddie Howe and Co to see what Newcastle United are actually going to go up against. If Brighton want to they can control the game from the early game plan. Newcastle United will have to find their feet in the game although if Brighton very uh, much so struggling in the Premier League this season like I said 2 wins in 10 5 goals scored in 10 whole games it doesn't look good for them on paper but still never write a team like Brighton off who absolutely battered us at the start of the season when we had the likes of Tonali, Trippier, Botman all them players available let's not take them for granted players like Pascal Gross Carlos Baleba in that midfield of Roberto De Zerbi south coast side when they set up in that 4-2-3-1 system yet again the form doesn't suggest it but they actually set up in that system very very well yet again I'm going to go to one man and one man only who I think can cause Newcastle United some big problems in this game that man is João Pedro Fabrizio Romano who was regarded as one of the best journalists out there said that João Pedro was going to sign for Newcastle United he came to Newcastle for a medical and at the last stage it didn't quite work out but look in the end we've got Alexander Isak as our striker he's certainly the better player there oh look would I take João Pedro at Newcastle right now due to that versatility and of course his penalty taking abilities he's absolutely superb as them just like Alexander Isak is and Callum Wilson I would definitely take him at Newcastle United. Like I said, he can play all across the front three, preferably the left striker and behind the 10. He is a very, very good player and we need to be careful to his individual quality. And lastly, one more player I think we should look out for before we get on to the fantastic Newcastle United and how I would actually line up if I was a Newcastle United manager. Fingers crossed one day, lads. But look, there's one player I think we should look out for and his name is Julio Aigo, who is actually playing as a left back, which is normally a centre back. Yet again, Brighton's versatility proven to be right here. Aigo is a very fast defender and a very strong defender. So whoever's on our right hand side, may it be Miggy Elmron, may it be Jacob Murphy, you see who I've put on the right hand side in just a second, will have a very hard game with that man on Brighton's left-hand side at left-back, of course. But without further ado, let's take a look at how Newcastle United should go into this game, in my opinion. Of course, let me know down below if you change any of these players to suit your starting 11 against Brighton. So I'll put the lineup on the right to me right now. So of course, I'll take a look at it as well. In goal, we are going with Martin Dubravka. This may shock a few people. Am I saying that Martin Dubravka is a better goalkeeper than Nick Pope? Never in a million years. Nick Pope is so superior at Martin Dubravka with his shot stopping abilities. Maybe not his distribution, although Martin Dubravka isn't the best either. But just commanding his box, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Commanding your box should be the quality of a Sunday league goalkeeper. All you've got to do to your mates and in front of you say I'm going for this ball Martin Dubravka has been here for absolute years how can he not command his box honestly it, it, that's an amateur ability but look I don't want to rush Nick Pope we've got a very vital game against Manchester United we should get through Brighton uh, with Martin Dubravka in goal which kind of proves to be uh, the case for a few players in this team right here but I think Nick Pope should be rested for that massive game against Manchester United you let me know down below if you disagree but left back we've went with one of my favourite players right now Lewis Hall this man has been fantastic recently and honestly I don't think he's been getting the plaudits he's deserved. We've been crying out for a left back all season who can get up the pitch and get back uh, in course. Eddie Howe said that he needed to improve defensively. In my opinion, defensively, he's absolutely superb. And when he goes forward as well, he's got a fantastic cross on him, which yet again, offensively and defensively, we've needed a left back who is capable of doing both things. Dan Byrne, bless him, man. When he's defending, he gets absolutely skinned. And when he's going forward as well, we'll have to go to a three back and he takes some absolute donkey's years to get back, doesn't it? But the opposite side to him at fullback is yet another case of resting one player to play another. But it's not that big of a deal, is it? I mean, Tino Livermento was a right back. That guy is absolutely unbelievable. Kieran Trippier, I would rest for Manchester United away. If Eddie, uh, Eddie Howe actually wants to play Trippier uh, away at Old Trafford, certainly play him there. But in my opinion, Tino is fully fit given the game to, uh, game time. And of course, if we want to play Kieran Trippier for experience at Manchester United away, I would give him the game time there as well. But our centre-back duo, uh, we can't really do anything else. So it picks 
Ericks himself. Big Dan Byrne at left centre back, who, by the way, he's been unbelievable at left centre back recently. I've been very critical of him. When he was at left back, rightly so as well, he was not great there. But at left centre back, undeniably, it's his best position. And right centre back, it's got to be Emil Kraft, isn't it? Of course, Fabian Shaw is out for this game. So, Emil Kraft, who I don't think is a bad player, by the way, he's not fantastic. He's not Champions League, Europa League, or probably even Conference League level. But he is certainly not a bad player whatsoever for depth, covering centre back and right back. I quite like him, but look, on to the midfield, and by the way, we are playing a 4-4-2 here. So as it's a 4-4-2, of course, we played a 4-4-2 away at Turf Moor, and we've never done that this season. It's always been a 4-3-3 with a flat midfield for Eddie House mags but nah, Jordy Josh is changing it up here. Yeah? But look, on the left wing, undeniably, undoubtedly, of course, obviously, my player of the season, Mr. Anthony Gordon. 10 goals, 10 assists, 6 penalties won, 5 converted, unfortunately, due to Alexander Isak. But look, it's not just his stats, which is kind of what all uh, goes around wingers nowadays, but he's absolutely worked his socks off this season. Absolutely absolute player of the season for me. To the right of him in midfield for me on that left hand side will be Elliot Anderson. I think like Lewis Hall he's another young lad who's kind of just breaking through the first team. Of course he had a fair few cameos last season. He didn't kind of uh, impress me there but this season he certainly has. His physicality levels, his determination to get to the ball and of course get forward and defend as well. He really has impressed me and he needs to get his chance on that right hand side. Like Anthony Gordon, undeniably, obviously, it is Bruno G. Like Alexander Isak and Anthony Gordon, probably the first names on the team sheet, so we'll just call it there. And on the right wing is Jacob Murphy, and by the way, I have a quite peculiar but quite fantastic stat about Jacob Murphy, which I'll put on the screen right now. Jacob Murphy has created the most open play assists out of any player in the Premier League this season. The only players that uh, are above him are Kevin De Bruyne and Mohamed Salah. I mean, he's in some company... I can't say I expected that, but he's in some company there, ladies and gentlemen. For me, look, Jacob Murphy is a fantastic player to have around the squad for the smaller teams. And by the way, I'm not classing Brighton in that bracket. They've played European football this season and are a fantastic team. But your likes of your Burnleys, your Sheffield United, with all due respect, I don't want to say any others because we normally get beat off the small teams for some reason. Jacob Murphy is the right winger to play in, uh, in them sort of games. He can kill them off and it just takes one pass from Jacob Murphy. One fantastic cross and it's in the back of the net and it's either met by Callum Wilson or Alexander Isak. And speaking of them two players, funnily enough, they're the two players I went with up front. But look, Alexander Isak and Callum Wilson. I went with Isak on the right because, of course, when you're putting Jacob Murphy on the right, Isak can get in there and top it forward. And Anthony Gordon on the left, he can cross it in for Alexander Isak. But if you want to swap them over, put Isak on the left. Uh, of course, he can cut in and shoot, which is certainly a very strong side of, of Alexander Isak's, which kind of isn't for Callum Wilson. He's not got that sort of finesse trait what Alexander Isak does. He hasn't got that flair, that technical ability. Callum Wilson is a complete poacher. So swap them over if you want, it's all up to you lot. So, time for a score prediction, ladies and gentlemen. You get yours down in the comments below. But lads, I'm feeling very, and I mean very confident for this game. So many times this season, I haven't felt confident at all. But this one, I certainly am. 18 games played at home this season for Newcastle United at St. James's Park, of course. Three losses, three draws, and 12 wins. Not a bad record whatsoever. And we sit fourth in home form in the Premier League, which you actually wouldn't expect. I don't know why that's kind of been hindered in my memory. But look, we've been fantastic at home. If Joel Linton can get back, I think our intensity will absolutely defeat Brighton Football Club. Anthony Gordon on that left-hand side will certainly get the better of Joel Veltman for me, who, of course, is Brighton's right-back. So I believe, and please don't jinx me, oh my God, Newcastle United 5, Brighton and Hove Albion 1. I don't know where that's come from. I've just got a sudden brain flash. We are going to absolutely run them ragged. Fingers crossed it'll be a replay of what happened at St. James's Park last season against Brighton, where we also secured Champions League football. It's not going to happen today, of course, mathematically, but uh, fingers crossed it can. But look, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have all enjoyed the match uh, preview. So, of course, there will be a match day vlog tomorrow, the final one of the season as well. If you haven't already, get them notification bells turned on so you won't miss the match day vlog tomorrow. Of course, it's the final Premier League game of the season as well. You do not want to miss that one. We'll see the players and, of course, all the staff clapping the fans at the end, which we do every single season at the end of every single Premier League game at home. So without further ado, I've been Jordy Josh. Go and enjoy your day, people. And wow, we're topping off the final uh, home game of the season match preview. See you all later, lads and lasses.